Now, when I was a kid, I loved to watch Star Trek. I'd sit in front of the screen, glued to the TV, watching the adventures of Kirk, Spock, Sulu, Chekhov on the Enterprise, and I would even draw pictures of starships in my school books. My teachers thought I was a bit weird. But you know what I wanted more than anything? I wanted to be Captain Kirk. <laughs> and yeah, that is, really was me, and as you can see, I haven't aged too well. Now, fast forward about 20 years. I've now moved to Shanghai, got my own small company doing real estate marketing. Life's good, I'm happy. But there's still something missing, something deep down. You know, I'd given up on my dream. Like, you know, everyone said, you can't do this, don't be crazy. So, yeah, I gave up on it. And here's me a few weeks ago, outside NASA Ames in California just having got back from the meeting to secure our half a million dollar loan to set up our own space organization. And I should let you know, and by the way, don't tell NASA or the US government, they might want their money back, that I have no background in science or engineering or technology. I, mean, I majored in Chinese at university and I failed high school maths. So, yeah, if I can get involved, believe me, anyone here can. Now, it all started when I got involved with the group called Space Gambit. This was about a year ago. We were applying for a grant from the government, from the US government. We didn't get it. But they said, we love your idea. Change a few things and reapply under this other grant. And yeah, wow, we got it. We are looking at funding and coordinating collaborative spaces. And the aim of all this is to build towards a spacefaring civilization. Uh, by collaborative spaces, I mean hacker spaces, maker spaces, tech shops, fab labs, uh, basically places where passionate people go to build things, to make things, to learn from each other, socialize, have a few beers around dangerous machinery. And the stuff people build, you know, we do electronics, like a little machine that will turn off any TV within a 50-foot radius. Uh, we do 3D printing, we do robotics, uh, hydroponic gardening. I've got a friend who wants to put a chip in the head of a cockroach and create a little insect army. I mean, you name it, at a hackerspace, you can probably do it. Or if you, you can't, you'll find somebody who can help with your crazy world domination plan. At most hacker spaces, maker spaces, and so on, there's a focus on open source. So anything that people make is shared, is reused. People are free to remix, and in some cases even to commercialize the technology. And when I talk about a spacefaring civilization, well, you know, we're not going to get to Andromeda tomorrow. First of all, we're going to look at building technology on Earth that can work in space. And if we're lucky within the next few years, maybe stuff in low Earth orbit. But as for the Moon, or the asteroids, or Mars, or the rest of the galaxy, yeah, that's going to take a bit longer. So, the next centuries or so, this is a long-term goal. And people ask, come on, why space? Why not focus down here, on the here and now, on Earth? Well, that's kind of the problem. We need an Earth 2.0, a backup Earth. We're doing a pretty shoddy job of looking after our planet. And you never know, another asteroid like the one that wiped out the dinosaurs could hit us, and then bye-bye civilization. Bye-bye everyone you ever knew, every king, every pauper, every peasant, everyone. And we don't even know if there's any other intelligent life out there. That could be it. No more intelligence in the universe. So we need a backup. We need colonies, we need people out there to continue the human race's work. Another reason is spin-off technologies. The work that NASA has done has led to pioneering innovation in artificial limbs, in firefighting technology, water purification, solar energy, and loads of other things. If you Google WTF NASA, you'll find a site with loads of other innovations that have come about through NASA's work. And we hope to replicate some of that with maker technology in space. 
Now, if you didn't relate to the first two, you'll relate to the money. Up there, in asteroids, there's a huge amount of platinum, gold, other precious metals. And billionaires like Peter Diamandis, who runs the XPRIZE, and I believe has spoken at TED before, uh, Eric Schmidt from Google, Larry Page, uh, James Cameron, the director, they're investing in a company called Planetary Resources to find these asteroids and mine them and become the first trillionaires that the Earth has ever seen. There's money up there in those rocks. Whoops, I pressed the wrong button, and we're back. And the most important reason for me is exploring is in our DNA. I can't explain it. If there's a mountain, we have to climb it. If there's a river, we have to bridge it. It's something deep down inside all of us, I think. And yeah, this is the biggest reason that resonates with me. That's why space. Why do we want to do it open and with makers? This beautiful, beautiful, sexy machine is the Saturn V rocket. It took us to the moon. And you know what? Sorry, guys. We can't have this anymore. It's not just the cost of building it. It's that we don't know how. The blueprints, the designs, all the data for this, they're stored in dusty filing cabinets on obsolete hard drives. If we want to find it, we can't really get, get it. If this were open source, and well, if it were open source, we could replicate it, we could share it. We'd have a backup of this, and we could improve it and rebuild it. But as it is, no dice, no luck. Sorry, guys. That's closed source for you. Another reason is education. By making this open, by democratizing the innovation process, we can get everybody involved, including the next generation. Today's schools are continuations of the 19th century model, which were trying to pump out factory workers for the Industrial Revolution. To create a better tomorrow, we can't rely on this model anymore. We need makers, we need open source. And the Makerspace group uh, actually got a, a different grant from the US government to put Makerspaces in US schools and get kids working with 3D printing and a lot of emerging technologies to build a better tomorrow. Another reason, sort of related to the one before, is spin-offs. This boring looking little board is an Arduino. It's an open source circuit board. And it may not look like much, but a load of spin-offs have come about because this is open source. People can innovate and make cool stuff. We've got self-regulating greenhouses. We've got gloves which translate sign language into verbal speech. We've got laser harps, open source satellites, open source flying robots and computers that can play chess, and many, many, many other things. And all of these new innovations lead to new businesses, which lead to new jobs, which improve the world economy, and we really, really need that right now. And yet, people are still asking, come on, are you crazy? Hell yes, we're crazy. Mr. Hewlett and Mr. Packard up there, they were crazy. Steve Jobs and Steve was, they were crazy too. But these guys in their garages, hacking around with electronics, kick-started the PC revolution. And if you don't think open source is up to the challenge, well, the whole internet and the economy and the way we do things today is built on open source and open standards. That's two revolutions under our belt. And I'd like to go for the hat trick and get the third revolution in as well. We're not the only ones who think this. NASA are behind us as well. Right now in California, they're working on building more maker spaces and hacker spaces within NASA to connect to the maker movement and to connect to citizen scientists. And even astronauts have the maker mentality. This is the International Space Station. A while ago, it had a major problem that could have really affected life support, could have killed the astronauts, could have destroyed a space station worth hundreds of millions of dollars and countless years of international cooperation. Conventional tools weren't working to fix the problem, so some astronauts MacGyvered together a toothbrush, an Allen bolt key, and a can of nitrogen and fixed the problem through maker mentality. Now, there are loads of groups doing open source space tech. We've got Open Luna, who are looking at 
extending man's reach into the stars and building open source spacesuits, which we could maybe one day use with future astronauts. To get our astronauts up there, we've got groups like Copenhagen Suborbitals who are doing open source rocketry. And I think right now they're working on their one-man rocket and it doesn't have an escape system just yet. But hey, if anyone wants to volunteer, I'll pass the message along. We've also got Liftport, who are working on space elevators, which are basically, well, what it says on the tin. It's a tether from either the moon or Earth into space, and stuff goes up and down like an elevator, making it cheaper and easier to send stuff up there. Now, once we've got people and stuff up there, we might want to look at building a colony. Uh, this here is Martin Jakubowski. Did I get that name right? Marcin Jakubowski. He spoke at TED a few years ago, I think, about his group, Open Source Ecology. They're building the Global Village Construction Set, which is open source designs, blueprints for everything you need to kickstart a civilization. So machines for making bricks, 3D printers, tractors, uh, cars, you name it. They're, building, they're working on building plans f to do it. And I'd love to adapt some of this stuff to maybe one day work on Mars or on the moon so we can really kickstart a colony there. And it's not just people that we want to send up. And I promised you amazing technology. And behold, I told you, you would never believe it. But here it is. It's advanced space-grade materials. It's not very stable here on Earth, but you get this up there and it's solid as a rock. <laughs> yes, advanced space grade drinking straws and blue tack. This is roughly a scale model of an ArduSat, which is an open source cube satellite. It's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. By having it open source and standardized, it brings down the cost of developing satellites. And already, a lot of universities and open source groups are looking at launching these. We've also got Kicksat.org, who are building, well, this is a mock-up of their satellite. And this is true to size. It's basically Sputnik on a chip. And they're helping anybody launch these. They're looking at having hundreds or thousands, send them into space on CubeSats, and then release them. After a few days, they burn up in the atmosphere, but they're great for taking that first little step into space. That's not all satellites can do. Uh, Walid and Gunnar earlier were talking about uh, circumventing censorship. And there's a group of hackers who are, a group of hackers and makers who are building uh, a satellite network specifically to circumvent censorship around the world. And this is still under development. Right now, they're working on a ground station network. But things are moving in this area as well. Now, if we're just building a space program, well, yeah, the governments and the private companies and maybe the hacker spaces and maker spaces of the world can work on that. But we want to go beyond that. We want to build a spacefaring civilization. To do that, we need all of humanity. We need teachers to educate the next generation and keep the ball rolling. We need speakers and marketers to get the word out. We need fundraisers and business people so we have the money to keep things going. We need scientists to tell us why our projects explode and engineers to help prevent our next projects exploding. So we really do need everybody involved. This is a humanity-wide effort and we don't want to leave anybody out. So, I'm asking you now, get involved, please, because I really want to see you all at a TED Talk on Mars one day. TEDx Mars. Get in touch with me afterwards. Uh, these are my details, or you can email me, go to the website, or just talk to me after this. So, yeah, thanks very much, and I hope to see you all on the moon or Mars one day. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers.